Hello, dear students. I am Samir Velankar. I welcome all of you to this another video on pointers in C. In this video, we will be seeing a very interesting topic called pointer to a function. Let's see. Now, you all know every variable is stored in the memory and every variable has some address. Just as every variable has an address, our program also has an address because where is program stored? An executing program, which we also called as process. A process or a program is also stored in the RAM. So it will also have some address. Hence, program code is also stored in the memory. And hence, code also has address. Now we can find address of any function. You remember main is also a function. So you can find address of any function by just writing name of the function. So suppose, why suppose always you have, you will always write a function in the, in your program called int main. Of course, that's from where the program starts. Now this main is a function. And obviously this main is stored in the memory. In fact, this entire code is stored in the memory, isn't it? This, this program is stored in the memory. So if, if you imagine this block of memory, this, this is the memory, then this function int f1, int x, which has been written on top of the program, will have some address from where it begins. Maybe address is 100. And then the function continues. And also int main, which is also a function, will also have some base address, maybe 200, from where the function starts. So the code is there in the main memory and code always has address and you can find out where is your code located. Remember your code is under execution, that's why it is in RAM. You can find out where is your code located by just finding address of main or finding address of f1 because every function starts at some base address. Now, if you want to know where is main stored in the memory, you just have to write main, that's all. But remember, don't put any parenthesis after the function. You see what I am pointing to. See the cursor. We can find address of any function by just writing the name of the function. So the name of the function is main. Or if you want to find out where is F1 located, you should just write F1 without any parenthesis. So name of the function will give address of that function. So let's see what we have done in this code. I have written a simple function F1, which gets some integer x and returns that integer plus 2. So its return type is integer. Of course, the F1 is loaded in the RAM as shown here. Then I have main. In main, I am trying to print address of main and of course I will use percent %u because I am printing address and only the name of the function without any parenthesis is going to give the address of main. Similarly, I am trying to get the address of f1 which is also a function and address is printed in percent %u and I will only write the name of the function. So the output of this code may be address of main is 100, address of f1 is 200. Great. Programmer can not only find address of a variable, but he or she can find address of the code also by just writing the name of the function. By the way, if you know by now that every function has some address, then we can always declare a pointer in the memory. This pointer also will be there in the memory. And we can ask the pointer to store the address of the function. So the pointer can point to the function. Remarkable, isn't it? Remarkable. We are having a pointer which doesn't point to a variable now. But the pointer points to the program code. It points to the base address of a function called f1. We can do this. We can declare a pointer to a function. So that's what we are up to now. Scrolling down now. How do you declare pointer to a function? 
now declaration of the pointer to a function is similar to declaring a function remember whenever you declare a function you have to write return type of the function like what does the function return int void float which type of return value does the does the function have and function always has some parameter list isn't it so maybe the function does not have any parameters but then still you have to write empty brackets okay and then between these two you just write the name of the pointer which you want to declare but the name of the pointer with asterisk symbol must be check my words must be declared in the bracket must be declared in the bracket I, i'll give you the reason don't worry trust me i'll give the reason why the pointer should be written in the bracket and what will happen if you don't write bracket all right then let's see let's see this program again the same program i have written again over here we have f1 function which returns int and which takes int parameter x this x is added with 2 and value is returned then we have main obviously we should have and we are printing address of main by just printing main and we are printing address of f1 by just printing f1 we saw that in the earlier program but this line is of our interest now this line now what is this line saying is we are declaring a pointer i'll write it better here we are declaring a pointer this p is a pointer of course because it is declared with asterisk symbol and this is a pointer to a function which takes a int parameter it it this pointer can store address or point to such a function which takes one int parameter and it can point to such a function which returns an integer so so you you just go back to the declaration how do you declare a pointer to a function first you write return type so you mean that this pointer p will point to such a function which returns int and then you write also the parameter list so you mean that this pointer will point to such a function which takes one int parameter now you tell me in this entire program don't we have a function f1 check this f1 is a function exactly which takes one int parameter and returns an int see it takes one int parameter and returns an int so this pointer p which i am marking here can very well store address of f1 but how do you store the address it's so easy you just say p equal to f1 come again if you write only f1 the name of the function what do you get address of f1 function and address of f1 function is stored by the pointer p i hope you got it going up here in the picture this p p was declared as a pointer to such a function which takes one integer and returns an integer and just say p is equal to f1 if you say f1 the name of the function it's going to give address 100 and p will store 100 so we say p now very well points to the function i hope you got this now starts the fun part really really the next line printf is printing value returned by f1 function is percent d clearly this is called to the function f1 is called by passing value 2 and obviously 2 is received by the local parameter x of the function and the function returns 4 because x is added with 2 and the value is returned so 4 is returned back at the call here and this printf is going to print 4 but the major thing that you should understand over here is here also we are printing value returned by f1 function but we are not calling f1 function we are using p here but what is p p is the pointer to the function f1 so if you write p it itself means calling the f1 function because p is pointing to f1 and obviously you have to pass the parameter because f1 needs the parameter again this parameter x will become 2 and 4 will be returned at the call so if a pointer points to a function you can call the function without using actual name of the function but you use the name of the pointer and using the name of the pointer you can access the function great isn't it the output of this these two lines is going to be 4 and 4 confirming that the same function was called 
okay let's go back to atom software i have kept this program ready over here the same program which we were talking about and here we are having a pointer now can you read this very well yes i i hope so e is a pointer it is written in the bracket which can point to any function which receives an integer parameter and which returns an integer and f1 is exactly that kind of function so p stores address of f1 note that we have not written and here and f1 because the name of the function itself is the address so you should not write and in this in this particular uh, topic where we are talking about address of the function the last two lines obviously return 4 4 and these lines are printing these lines are printing address of main and address of f1 so if the main is stored at address 100 if f1 is stored at address 200 outputs will be 100 200 and then 4 4 let's see what's the output of this code by executing it so it, it will print it will print addresses of main address of f1 of course the addresses are going to be a very large number as we are dealing uh, in in the diagrams i saw I, sh I have shown that the address of main is 100 and address of f1 is 200 oh it's taking very long very long to run this i think i should change okay fine uh maybe that you are not able to properly see this address of main but I i'll spell out for you the address of main actually is 4199371 and address of f1 is 4199360 what's important is both main and f1 are having address and the value returned by f1 function is 4 interesting in, interestingly the second line was called to the function f1 via p via pointer p okay now more on this let's see let's see i'll just clean the slate now i will try do some writing work you just have these puzzles and try to answer these questions if you have understood really you have i think you understood what is pointer function let's say i am having a function like this in my program void void f1 int x comma float y comma float y and the function does something that's immaterial now i want to declare pointer to this function so how do i declare pointer to the function come again declare a pointer in the bracket so p is the pointer this pointer is pointer to such a function which takes one int parameter and one float parameter separate them with comma and this pointer is pointer to such a function which returns nothing check the return type of the function and then put a semicolon so this is a pointer to a function which takes int and float as parameter and which returns nothing so how do you store address of f1 in p you can just say p is equal to f1 i hope you are getting it because name of the function itself is the address so now p the pointer p will point to this function stored in the memory correct or not and how do you call the function you can call f1 function by passing an integer integer and float obviously because that are the two parameters or you can call f1 function by using p p is a pointer to f1 and you can pass an integer and a float okay i hope you got it now more more about this I, I will write again a function declaration and you try to understand that function declaration first of all suppose i have a function like this int asterisk f1 int x and the function does something now how do you read this function f1 is a function which will return which will return int pointer see this is the return type isn't it so f1 will return int pointer means what f1 will return address of a integer int pointer means it will return address of an integer and what is the parameter taken by f1 it is int x integer parameter now suppose we want to declare a pointer to such a function how would you declare put pointer in the bracket let's say w is the pointer this time what is the parameter taken by the function it is int what is the value returned by the function it is int pointer semicolon this becomes the declaration of the pointer 
to such a function which takes int parameter and which returns an integer pointer so how do you store address of f1 in w you just say w is equal to f1 because you know name of the function gives address of the function so w will point to that function isn't it so so i hope you are understanding how to declare pointer to a function now interestingly in one of the gate exams there was a question asked yes gate 2003 i got it just get get through this question i am sure you will be able to solve it in less than 1 minute what does the following c statement declare int asterisk f is written in the bracket so surely this is a pointer isn't it pointer to a function and this is the parameter now what kind of parameter is the function going to take it is going to take pointer parameter integer pointer parameter isn't it and what is the function going to return an int so what is the what is this the uh, definition mean f is a pointer to a function come again f is a pointer to such a function which takes int pointer as a parameter and which returns int value so a option i think is correct a function that takes int pointer as argument or parameter and returns an integer it was so simple isn't it it was so simple okay going back to our pointer to function topic i said that when you declare a pointer i i stressed on the point when you declare a pointer to a function you should write that pointer in the bracket i said now why what happens if you don't write bracket over there let's see i hope you have already understood it but then continue with this discussion suppose i declare a declare a pointer like this int pointer p pointer p bracket int suppose i write this now is this p a pointer to a function really no p is not a pointer to a function please understand we are saying p itself is a function here which takes int parameter and p returns integer pointer p is a function which takes integer parameter and it returns integer pointer now what does this mean in that case int asterisk p in the bracket and in now we want now we want to say p is genuinely a pointer which will point to a function which takes int parameter and returns an int i hope you have understood every aspect of it thank you very much